Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, or if you're a new visitor, hello. Um, normally this is a, a fish related channel about my hobby and tropical fish and saltwater and freshwater. But today I'm going to do something a bit different and I want to share an experiment I'm starting with all of you. This experiment is to do with growing my YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm going to employ some of the tactics that I've learned recently and throughout my career to see if I can get it to work and you'll get to see whether or not it works by checking the subscriber count down below. I'm recording this in start of October 2017 so if it's October 2018 and I've still got 500 subscribers down below you know you can ignore everything that's about to come and skip on to the next video. But if I have moved on, then these are the tactics that I've employed to get me there. I'll talk a little bit about myself first, I guess. So I'm Graham, Graham Kerr. I've got a background in IT, so I work in IT. By all means, go and search me up on LinkedIn if you want to see my CV or anything like that. But I've got a background in web design and things like that, but day to day it's more infrastructure, architect, that kind of stuff, which may mean nothing to you and it doesn't really matter. But essentially, I've got a an interest in all things geeky. I got into the YouTubing thing more through my hobby in fish keeping. Uh, and I've been a member of YouTube I think for roughly three years to this point. And in those first two and three quarter years I managed to get to 300 subscribers with zero effort. Um, because all I would do would be taking short videos of my fish upload to YouTube, move on, a couple of weeks later or a couple of months later another short video of a fish or a tank, move on. Uh, over time it got a bit more elaborate and I started to talk in videos and things like that but ultimately I was doing YouTubing as a way to keep an eye on how well my fish were growing and things like that. I, I, had, no, um, I had no willingness to connect what I was doing with my hobby and what I was doing with my career and see if I could get uh, them both to work together to, to boost what I was doing in YouTube. But over time, when I got to about 300 users, uh, subscribers, I thought, well, I've got this far with putting in absolutely no effort. Let's put in a tiny little bit of effort, and in the last two months, I've gone from 300 to 500. So it took me three years to get to 300, and it took me less than three months to almost double that. So I wanted to have a bit of an experiment to see if I can get up to a thousand subscribers. So I was amazed that 10 people would subscribe to this channel, never mind a 50 or 100 or 300 or now 500 or more, um, and didn't really consider YouTube as a thing to do or having a sub was a thing that you would have. Yeah, but it is, I've learned more um, I mean I, at work every now and again I'd be involved in meetings advising people about YouTube as a perfectly valid marketing strategy um, just never thought about doing it for myself so now I am uh, I'm going to make a bit of an effort now in the production quality of my videos I'm pretty sure the content's going to remain much the same where it's me rambling on aimlessly talking about what's going on in a fish tank or another um, so if you've got this far for that content, don't worry, it's not going anywhere. Um, but I'm trying to employ a little bit more thought around the, the background and what's going on. And I plan to release videos like this every now and again, as you can see me talking about the tactics that I'm thinking about, and then you'll see me employing it on the videos uh, as I release them on a, a week to week basis. So like I say, I've got these ideas in my head of things to do to improve the channel and make it more sub worthy. I'm going to employ them as the tactics, but caveat that they're not my own tactics, they're things I've learned off other people, um, as well as my own experiences. Um, I probably have to say that people like you know, big YouTubers like uh, Daryl Eves and people like that, yes, I've watched their videos, but I guess in my niche, and the word is niche to those people, there's lots of people out there calling it a niche. It's niche. Anyway, we'll come back to that. Uh, people like Aquarian Co-op, Corey McElroy, he does another channel where he talks about the YouTube grind and bits like that. And it's very interesting because it kind of fits in with both my hobby and my work. Um, Nick Nimmin, 
he's another one that I really like. I've watched a lot of his videos. Uh, Brian G. Johnson, there's plenty of them. So there'll be things that I've learned off of them. Uh, and then I guess it's things that I'm willing to do as well. I've got a life. I've got three kids and a wife and a job that take a lot of time. Um, so uh, the things that I do have to be things that I'm willing to do because I'm not willing to lock myself in a cupboard for 12 hours a day just to get my videos right and make sure I'm releasing a video every day and I'm not going to do that. Um, so take from these what you will. Employ the things that I do. If they work for you, great. We'll see how we get on. So like I say, my hobby, the fish keeping bit, um, I do that because I like it and it's fun. Um, when I started doing more and more videos, I found I enjoyed that. I, I like the, the idea of the setting up the camera and things like that. I, learning how to edit. I enjoy that kind of stuff. I'm no good at these things. I've never been a very creative person, but I'm getting better and I will keep going until I am better. Um, so that's the, the motivation behind this is because it's interesting to me. I think it is fun. It's another hobby if you like, seeing how well I can do with my YouTube channel. Um, I've got no qualms or expectations that this is going to make me rich or anything like that, but I don't think it has to, to be something you want to do a bit better at. Um, I play golf quite, uh, well, not regularly at all, but I play golf, but I don't expect to be going to win the Masters. But I do expect to be getting better and win the odd game. Um, same with anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, so I'm going to put some effort in and see how good I can get at this, I guess is where I'm coming from. Um, so that's the kind of motivation behind this. So that's the why I'm doing it. Um, the how is really, I'm going to keep making these regular, hopefully short videos about the things that I'm thinking about employing in my regular videos. So my regular fish keeping videos, they'll be coming out uh, weekly. And I'll start to employ some of these tactics that I'm picking up on and have already picked up on and have already started to employ uh, to see how far I can get. So there's two th things that I've been looking at so far which are effectively going to cover everything that I ever will look at and it's getting the basics right and playing the YouTube game. In terms of getting the basics right, I used to wander around with my phone just picking it up going, yep, yeah, hold that there for 10 seconds, that's that fish, fish captured uh, upload video done. So now I'm doing a little bit more in terms of thinking about it beforehand before I do anything uh, and playing a YouTube game is more about the techniques and the skills you have to employ to get your video ranked, to get it seen by more people and all those sorts of things. So in future, I'm pretty certain at the moment, but again my mind can be changed at any point, I'm pretty certain at the moment that these are going to be the principles that keep me going and it will just be marginal gains upon them to take me to the next level and again and again and again. Uh, small improvements on getting the basics even more right, uh, playing the YouTube game to a higher degree or a more intense degree to get you up to the next level as you want to go. And there may well come a point where I say, this is becoming a chore now and I'll just stop. Um, but for the moment, it's interesting me, so we'll see how far we can get with it. So the basics, I guess, are thing, and we'll jump on the computer a bit for some of this. The basics are making your channel look like it's open for business. Um, I guess the, the very first thing you have to think about is why are you doing this? So for me, it's something that it was fun, the hobby side, and the slow realisation that other people were interested in it, unbelievably as I found that, um, meant that I'm getting close to the realms of making a few pennies off this, and getting a, a check off YouTube every now and again, or yeah, another revenue stream. I, I don't think I'll ever get uh, rich off the back of it, but if it pays for some of my fish food, great. So the things that I started with when I got to my 300 users, for instance, were my YouTube page. I had put no effort into it at all. I had didn't have a banner, I don't think. I'm sure I had a profile picture because I had to have one. Uh, but I had put no effort into the layout of my YouTube page, so and it's, it's so simple when you think about it. But if you go to one now, quite often I'll look at a, a new channel that I don't know anything about, click on it, and I get presented with a mess. I go, can't be bothered. And it's the psychology of it all, and it, it always comes back to this. 
even when it was me doing these things, um, I thought no one cares about that. I'm not going to bother about changing my banner picture or laying out my videos in a certain order. That's that's um, it's immaterial. It doesn't really matter. And then as soon as I go and look at someone else's channel, they've not bothered to put up a banner picture. Well, I'm not going to bother watching their videos. It's just something about the human brain. If something looks a bit more professional, then you're willing to give it a bit more of a try. So the things that I'll show you here. Okay, so let's start at the start. Um, channel page. So this is my channel page. And I think the basics you need here, well, let's start with the top down, uh, a decent banner picture. Um, you're thinking here is this is your shop. So if you want to get more people to be interested in what's in your shop and your videos, make it look nice on a shop display. So on this channel here, I've gone for the name of the channel, the logo, and a picture of some discus fish. So it's pretty much unambiguous as to what this channel is going to involve. It's going to be fish um, and fish related matters. Uh, to go with your banner, obviously you want a decent profile picture. Now, some people would say, probably rightly, that you should have a human face there, so it should be you. Ideally looking in this direction as if you're watching your name or your comments that your profile picture might come up against. Uh, I just haven't done that yet. It might be something I do soon, but I find generally my mug scares off people rather than entices them in anywhere, so we'll see how it goes. Um, the other main thing is to look at your channel as if you're a new subscriber as well. So you're coming to it from uh, a position of not being a subscriber. What do you get better with? Having something that looks a bit professional. Now, whether you can do that yourself or it's something you have to go and get another graphic designer or someone like that to do it, whatever it takes, really, I guess. And it's, it's up to you. I, I got these ones from Fiverr. It's a website where you pay someone a fiver to do a job. So I said, I want a banner for YouTube. Just type it in the search engine and back will come and say, yep, I'll do one for you, five pound. Um, that was a tip that I got from Corey McElroy on the Aquarium Co-op. Um, that was on one of his channels. So, so when you get your channel page looking right, so it's making sure you've got your links aren't dead, you've got some related channels on the side that you subscribe to, you've laid out your popular videos against your like videos, against your playlists, against your uploads. Have a look at mine, I think that's right for me, that's the way I want to see it. I don't want people to be presented, the first thing they see is all the videos I like, effectively taking them away to someone else's channel. I want them, the first thing they see to be my videos, and my latest videos. And under that I've got my most popular videos, so as they see my latest, and then they see my best, or most popular at least. There used to be a button here you could click to save you as a yourself or a visitor, but this is a new layout and I just haven't caught on. But essentially the other way to do it is to copy that into our incognito window, and you'll get what visitors see. Welcome video, and the next section is uploads popular uploads and playlists. So that layout is done when you're when you're here clicking the edit layout button. And then you get to choose what are in these sections. Um, it's quite often the, the, the default is something like videos you like, which is lots of videos of other people's. Not necessarily what you want there, but spend some time, look around, essentially get your layout right, make sure you've got a non-standard nice banner profile picture and you've got your front page set up nice and you've got a channel video introducing yourself and what your channel is all about and you won't go far wrong with that from a basics point of view. Um, some other basics I would point out would be if you'll notice all my videos here all have a similar theme, opaque black circle, a little orange logo, discus newbies, YouTube logo and then what's it about in a picture. Um, that effectively is branding. Um, you can't see it, but I was doing the inverted comma sign there. Uh, it just ties everything together, makes it look a bit more professional. And something looks a bit more professional, then a few more people are likely to watch it. I use a tool called Canva. Um, I'll 
Essentially an online tool, it's free to use. Um, and essentially you can get a little uh, template, put it to the right size for a YouTube template, use any number of free shapes, layouts, uh, whatever, whatever you want, upload your own pictures and things like that, but you can create anything for free. You can do quite a lot of things. It looks uh, fairly slick and it's fairly easy to do which were my main requirements and then once you've got a template saved essentially you only need to change very little change the background picture maybe move the circle around but don't just copy me do your own thing here but it was, there's plenty of things to do if you want any logos and things like that for youtube you just type them in the search box and you got all these free uh, options there are paid options as well but i find you can do most things for free so that's Canva, and that will get you to the point where your thumbnails are done. Uh, you may notice here I've got a couple of extra options. Uh, I use vidIQ and TubeBuddy. Uh, I mostly use vidIQ because it gives me this little bit up here, which is at a glance uh, analytics of who's watching in the last 60 minutes and the last 48 hours. But TubeBuddy, I, I really do quite like. It gives you the same as VidIQ, but a little bit more as well. Um, for instance here, this is just a, a very quick analytics. You can pair your channel against someone else. In this case, it's doing me versus me. Uh, but you can see subscribers you've gained over the last 30 days. It can go down to views and videos. Um, but it's really useful for a quick reference of what's going on. So you can see day by day how many subscribers I've got. Um, so there, September 28th, I think that was probably the day Michael's Fish Room gave me a shout out on one of his videos, so he got me 31 subscribers. So thanks for that. But you can go back, once we'll talk about analytics later, but you can go back and look through what was working in terms of uh, views, or why did you get more views at a certain time, or a certain day, or a certain topic, or whatever it may be. Um, it's really useful. It, again, it's free tube buddy. I'll put a link in the description. Go along, sign up. There are paid versions as well, but again, like Scotsman stereotype kicking in, I can get most things I need done for free. Um, but generally, they all uh, will come. Well, let's, let's look at one. So, in editing, you'll see all these little icons here DB, DB, DB. These are all little extra tools from TubeBuddy. Um, Which is really helpful when you're uh, putting your stuff together. Again, there's some vidIQ stuff here as well. Um, kind of like a checklist of what's going on. But uh, the tube buddy is the one that I, I would recommend if you only want to use one. It's dead straightforward. Go with that. Just helps you out with word counts and things in your titles and descriptions. But tags is the main thing for me. So tags is where. Again, getting into analytics here, but it's one of the main things YouTube will use for finding your video. You tell them what it's about and they'll list it in the appropriate categories. And these numbers you see here is where this video ranks on YouTube for a certain search term. Um, so again, over time you can build up a picture of what kind of things it's worth putting in here to figure out what your tag should be. And then uh, TubeBuddy gives you some tools where you can sort them out into uh, by rank so you can see them a bit easier. But also, uh, you can get it to suggest similar tags. You can suggest it'll take a look at your existing tags, suggest new ones and where they might rank. Uh, and it's a lot simpler than it might be. Add that one in. Tag inserted. Close. Done. Oops, good. As simple as that. You can use it to explore of what new tags you might want to do, even for new. Um, check out whether something works or not. Whether whether it's a contended term. Um, again, I'm not going to any more detail at this point, but really useful tool. I suggest you get it. 
and have a play around with it and see if you find it useful or not. But quickly, that covers the, the basics um, of where your channel 2.0, if you like. So if you've just got a channel, you've just been throwing videos at it and not really putting any effort into the production or editing or promotion, uh, there are some quick changes you can make that should make a difference. And I have found to make a difference for me. Once you've got your your channel, uh, your page open for business, you need to go to the most important thing, which is creating some content and some stuff to put up there. Now, you do need some equipment to do that, but um, it doesn't need to be fantastic. I mean, right now, I'm using a mobile phone. I've not even got an external mic at the moment because I can't get it to work. I think I've broken the port on my, my phone that accepts the, the mic. But you do need some basics, and rather than running around with your holding your mobile phone and having the shakiest possible video, invest small investments in things like even a selfie stick. Um, are good, but I've got this thing here, which is effectively a, a pistol grip where you put your phone in here and you can wander around, it just keeps that a little bit steadier. And then when you're using it differently. It's a tripod that sits on your desk, so you can have it there to give you a steady photo. Um, I've got one that's got um, bendy legs, so if I'm in the fish room I can attach it to a, an upright of one of the shelving units and keeps it steady. I've set camera sitting right now on a tripod um, I got a long time ago for my normal camera. So. There are things that you can do to make things just that little bit better than holding the camera yourself. Get a tripod. Rather than using the mic off the phone or something like that, get an external mic. Get some lighting. I mean, I'll show you a clip now of my setup here. It's not anything fantastic or brilliant, but it's just that little bit better. We have gone to the effort of... I uh, didn't do this for you, I must admit. But I've got my... Joe's green monitor here, but I just put on my nice background, make sure all my windows are closed. Uh, I've got a light behind the the screens at the moment, so it's got some red shining out of it. It's just that little bit of effort that makes it look a little bit neater, and hopefully draws in a, a few more viewers. And then you've got to think about what your niche is, um, and immerse yourself in that community. So you're probably already doing this. Uh, anyway, so my niche is fish keeping and tropical fish keeping, so I'm a member of dozens of Facebook groups, uh, local societies, uh, whatever it takes, join these groups, go along, meet people, so as when you do get to the point that you've got videos to release, you've got places to release them to, uh, and more people to interact with you, and building a community if you like, um, I mean, even very right today, Someone in my niche, Michael from Michael's Fish Room, released a video giving my channel a shout out, saying, Come look at this guy here, he's I like what he's doing, maybe other people like what you're doing. You, unless you're out there talking to people and getting to know them and participating in the community, you'll never get things like that. And they're invaluable when you're a small channel. Um, it's really hard to grow from zero if you don't have uh, a, a community of users and people that you can rely on to look at your stuff. And the number one thing that you need to do as a basic is produce your content regularly. So no matter what it is, get it out on a weekly basis or a fortnightly basis or a monthly basis, whatever it is you decide to do, do it and stick to it. Um, even really well established YouTubers that have got thousands if not tens of thousands of subscribers, if they go away and take a break for too long, they lose it and it's gone. Uh, and it happens all the time, you hear people talking about it, um, it's, you need to be consistent if you want to get your channel to grow. So that's my resolve, is that I'm going to put out a video weekly. Sometimes I might put out two, but I'll at least put out one every single week, so as I've got that level of consistency. And again, in future, I might tailor that somewhat and come up with a proper schedule, so obviously you know, on a Friday I'm going to release a video, or a Tuesday, or whatever it is. Uh, but for now, make sure I get one out a week, and that'll keep me going. The other thing to remember is the content itself, so I have to leave it up to you to 
decide what your content is going to be. So in my case, it's going to be videos of my fish and my tanks and my experiences looking after my fish and my tanks and anything related to it. it could be whatever it is for you. Um, but you've got to think about your content and make it as good as you can make it. And technically, that means the audio and the video rather than the direction or anything more elaborate than that. It's a few the the audio perversely is more important than the video. So someone will watch a video that's not the highest resolution, as long as they can make it out. But as soon as the audio goes, they'll turn it off. So they'll not listen to ten seconds worth of crap audio. Uh, no matter, even if the video is in 4K and perfect, if the audio is not right, that person's walking. Now, content obviously trumps both of those, but you can have good content that won't get seen because of poor audio, whereas you can have average content that will get watched because it's got good audio and good video. So make sure you're getting those things right. And then when you think about editing, um, again, this is new to me. It used to be whatever I shot was what got uploaded. And I thought I'll take some time over this and look into some editing. Uh, at the moment, I'm using Sony Vegas, um, but in the past, I've used another tool which I can't remember the name of VSDC, it's called, which is free, completely free, and does almost the same things as Sony Vegas, it's just a little bit easier to uh, use Sony Vegas, um, easier to find tips and things online. Um, but Taking your time is the biggest thing because I'm always in a rush to do things. There's only so many hours in a day, and I want to get through these things. But you need to sit back and think and watch and rewatch and rewatch and rewatch, and then you still get it wrong. So even though I've been going on about earlier, I was talking about how important audio is. My last two or three videos have had shocking audio, so I just can't get it right. So I think I put a caveat in earlier that I'm not always going to do my. The, one, the things that I'm saying myself, I'll get it wrong every now and again, but things will happen and you can only try as hard as you can try and still um, getting it out. So done is better than perfect. So there's some truth to that, but there's a balance. Uh, done but terrible is not better than perfect, um, obviously. The other final basic, I think, is share that stuff and get it out there. Um, friends, family, people in the community that you've joined up on. I always felt dead embarrassed about going onto someone else's forum saying, hey guys, look, I've made a video. I think, God, why am I telling people this? No one's going to want to watch my stuff. But they're not even going to get a chance to if you don't ask them to watch it. Um, so they, they call it call to actions. In the video as well, and where you tell people, come along, subscribe, or check out my website, or do whatever it is. You've got to, if you don't ask people to do things, they're not going to do them. If you do ask them, they still might not do them, but some will, so it's worth doing. Um, but you've got to share the stuff out there, get it out there, uh, make it known to anyone that might be interested in your stuff that you've got a new video out. Because uh, it's really important that you, you get it out to as many people as possible. So the next bit is called what I like to call playing the game of YouTube uh, and understanding a little bit more about how YouTube works. So YouTube measures its success in how many views you've got on your videos and how long you retain the attention of those viewers. So viewer retention is very important as well as numbers of views of videos. Subscribers to YouTube doesn't really matter. They don't care how many subscribers you've got. But that's not to say they're not important, because I'm sure you do the same thing when you're looking uh, for YouTube content. If you see someone or two videos that look very similar offering the same sort of content, one of them's got 10,000 subscribers and one of them's got 50, you go with the one with 10,000 subscribers. Uh, it only makes sense. So subs are important in that side of things, but in terms of how much YouTube will present your content to other people, it's more about uh, what your performance is like recently. So if you've had a, a run of terrible videos, then YouTube's not going to be pushing your stuff to anyone else. And it's important to remember that. The more subscribers you've got, they are people that will come and watch your videos. Now, if I've got 500 subscribers now, that's, in theory, 500 people that will come and watch my videos. Now, they, they won't. They all won't. Some people subscribe, forget, never see you again. Uh, 
but my videos, my my videos often get a lot more views than 500. That's because YouTube is sending that out to people who are not subscribing, saying, what do you think about this? Do you want to try this video? And those people that are clicking on it to see whether or not it's it's them that are your, your target market. Your subscribers are important, but they're your target to get new people to subscribe so you don't have to go out and find them all the time. And it gives you, gives you a little bit of a gap between the best performing videos you can produce and then if you're off one week, you've still got lots of subscribers there to pick up the slack if you like. So, like I say, YouTube, it's the views that are important for YouTube. So the better performing your videos are, the more people YouTube is going to show your videos to, then the more chance you've got to get someone else in to grab their views and retain their viewership to then keep building and building and building and building and building. So that's the basic idea. So unless you've got thousands and thousands of friends, you're going to need to rely on YouTube to push your videos for you. Because uh, you can't always contact everyone and say, I've got a new video, come and watch it. SEO is a big thing for uh, YouTube, search engine optimization. Um, again, that's something that I was interested in anyway because of my background and work and previous experience. But what we're talking about there is your title, your description, the tags, um, all those sort of things that when you upload a video, always upload to private by the way, so you get a chance to put in these things correctly. It's getting them right and it's it's a bit of a dark art, but it's not really that complicated. It's understanding what keywords you want your video to be found for. So if I say I'm doing a video on discus unboxing, I will get a new shipment of discus in, I'm going to have, make sure I have the word discus and unboxing in the title of the video. And then to reinforce that, I'm going to have the words discus and unboxing in the description of the video, maybe even more than once. And then I'm going to have tags that say discus unboxing or discus and unboxing, making sure that there's no way that can slip through the net that if somebody is searching for discus unboxing, they're going to get shown my video. Now we'll cover this in more depth in future videos, hopefully, but um, because there are ways and means to get these things to be really truly optimized. But the amount of videos I see at the moment where it's just called what, what subject description, three word description, no tags, no nothing, and they're never going to get seen like that. And so you want to avoid that pitfall. And it's something I was guilty of. And one of the main things I changed was putting a bit more thought into my titles, descriptions, and tags, was what got me that extra 200 users from 300 so quickly. Um, and I worked at this point. Um, a tool that I use uh, with YouTube called TubeBuddy. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Go along, have a look. It's free. There are paid options, but you don't need to use the paid options straight away, definitely. But it really helps you out with suggesting tags uh, and suggesting um, all kinds of things, actually. I'll probably do a video just on TubeBuddy, but there are others out there. Go and have a look at them. It's a really useful tool and it was something that I struggled with to say, well, what can you think of that you want people to search for? It's got a button that you click and it tells you what to put in there. So it's really useful. Get it, try it out, have a play around. Like I say, it's free. You don't need to pay anything. And um, if you use the link that I've got down below, I think I get something like eight pence or something probably, but we'll... that's by the by. Um, it's really useful. Like I say, it, it, it helped me out no end. When you get going a little bit, um, and even at the moment it's of limited value to me, but understanding the analytics uh, that are provided by YouTube is again something that in future I'll be doing to make sure I can grow at my optimum rate. Um, I mean, it is useful for everyone to see where your viewers are coming from or how long they're staying or what videos are performing well. Um, but if you're only getting hundred subscribers and you're only getting tens of views rather than hundreds or thousands of views it's kind of limited as to what that can tell you to do so you really need to get some kind of back catalogue going so you can trawl through the stats and find out what's working and what's not uh, and again TubeBuddy can help you decipher that because it's not always the easiest thing to understand um, straight off the analytics from your creative studio for instance but it's not impossible and TubeBuddy does help with that. It will show you the stats in a way that's easier to understand and identify trends and it'll tell you things like when you should be releasing videos because it's worked out when's the optimal time for you to release a video for instance. 
Um, so analytics, well, again, really powerful, but only once you get going, I feel. Um, so I'm, I am looking at them now just purely because of my interest in them, but they're not really telling me too much quite yet. And I believe that will just get more and more powerful as time goes on. And again, the monetization thing, when you've only got dozens of viewers rather than hundreds or thousands, it doesn't really make much of a difference whether you monetize your stuff or not. I would say do it as soon as you get a chance. I've certainly done it. Um, I know in some countries you have to have a thousand subscribers before you can monetize your videos, but for some reason I've been monetized for a long time now. Not that I make any money off it, mind, but um, the box is ticked. And should I get over that threshold, money will come in. Um, but again, that's talking about ad revenue for YouTube rather than the other opportunities. So if you might have a business link to it. Um, you might have, well, in fact, that's a good point. Something I've been thinking about a lot recently. I see my background's in IT, that's my main job, where I get all my money from. I've got a little side business. Um, where I install and maintain fish tanks. Surprise, surprise. But I've never brought it up on my regular channel before. Purely because I thought, mm, I just don't know if it's the right thing to do. So it's something that's on my mind. And how to connect the two together um, will be something that I'm thinking about. Um, again, it's a little side business. I don't make hardly any money off that at all. It happened purely because friends and family were asking me to do these things. And then I got a few friends of friends and thought, well, hang on, this is effectively a little cottage industry. I'll make it a bit more official. Um, and again, do I want to connect it to my channel? It's called Discus Newbies. It doesn't make me sound very authoritative. Um, so maybe in hindsight, Discus Newbies is not necessarily the best name for a channel. Again, these are the things that I'll be exploring in the weeks and months to come. Um, you might have seen in some of my more recent videos, I started doing t-shirts with my Discus Newbie logo. So again, when I talked about getting on Fiverr to get a logo designed, I'm getting my money's worth out of that. Getting t-shirts, mouse mats, hats, whatever it may be. Um, I use a lot of people, mainly in the US, I don't know if they have a, a UK version, use Teespring and I've been using Spreadshirt and the only reason I did this is because it took literally five minutes to set up my shop all I had to do was upload my design and say what things I wanted it on and boom it was there done um, I ordered myself a t-shirt it came in a few days I was really happy with it so that would be another way to monetize your channel that I would definitely recommend doing that and you may as well do it straight away doesn't matter if you've only got a couple of dozen subscribers, you could have thousands and nobody will buy your stuff. And you may as well have it there so as if you do get um, popular in years to come, you've still got those links in the descriptions. Um, Amazon Associates, I've recently started putting in links to products that I've used in a video. So if I'm using something, I'll put a link in and say, well, if you want to buy it yourself, go here and buy it and I'll get 10 pence or whatever it may be. So there's definitely lots of mileage in how you monetize something and whether you should or shouldn't. I believe you probably should straight away, um, unless you're trying to build some kind of trust or something like that. But I don't believe there's anything dishonest about saying this is an affiliate link or go and buy a t-shirt and I'll get a few quid for it. It just doesn't make sense to me that you would hide that. So if you're, if you're not doing that, Maybe it's because I'm Scottish. It's taking every opportunity to maximise the money that I can get in. Because uh, all these things cost money, um, ultimately. It's my hobby. I want more fish tanks. Everyone always does. I want more fish to go in them. So the more money I can accumulate from the as many directions as possible, the better. Um, but they're effectively all the things that I've been thinking about and the things that I've done so far. So I think the biggest thing for me was, so far all I've done is really do those things that I've talked about in the basics. Getting my page looking right, looking at the, um, getting tripods. I'm experimenting with lights now. This is the first time I've really used lights. I've always tried to just use the natural light. 
I'm trying to get the audio right and failing miserably. I need to spend some money there, I think. Um, I, I don't want to... There's nothing wrong with using my phone. I think it's just my particular phone has got its own little issues that maybe it's not the best phone to use for it. But it's perfectly good. It's a 4K camera. Um, it's meant to be used for audio, so it should be good at audio. It's just mine has a little bit of a mind of its own. Um, so I... I I fancy upgrading that anyway, um, so maybe I'll just get a different phone or maybe I'll get a DLS, DSLR or something along those lines. Um, like I say, lights, I'm trying these out. Normally I'll just make use of natural light and stand near a window, nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, so the basics are the things that I've tried to put a little bit more thought into my shots that I'm taking. Um, looking out for reflections, obviously is a big thing with fish tanks. And getting the audio better and trying to balance it a little bit more. Failing sometimes, but I'll keep trying, I'll keep getting better. And along with those basics, the getting the titles, the descriptions and the tags mm. and anything else related to SEO. Um, again, TubeBuddy helped me out loads there, so I'd recommend that to anyone. But they're the things that kind of almost doubled my subscriber count in a couple of months. So what took me three years to get to 300? I suspect within three months I'll be at 600. Um, and getting more vocal and trying to go over that initial shyness of wanting to share stuff with other people that you might not necessarily know. Um, the worst that will happen is people will tell you to stop doing it. So that's my top three tips that I've done so far. And so hopefully you'll see some of these techniques creeping into my regular fishy videos um, and as I start to get my head around the next lot of improvements that I want to make more and more of um, I'll start bringing other videos like this in. I'll probably create a playlist of it all on its own. I'm well aware that going off topic from what your channel is is probably going to hurt your subscription count um, but I really don't mind that much. It's not like I've got tens of thousands of subscribers to worry about. Um, but yeah, I'll just keep track of things in that playlist here uh, and start implementing these things so you'll see them coming into my regular videos and then as I come up with some new things or feel that I've got something to talk about we'll focus in on some specific sections but if you've thought of anything yourself that you're wondering how can I make something a little bit better or where can I go drop me something in the comments here to talk about give me some ideas of things that I can talk about in the next video for instance or something you don't understand or uh, you're not sure about just ask some questions let me know we'll see if we can talk about more stuff in the future and uh, maybe do a live stream on this one day um, my internet connection is not really good enough for a live stream so well, I'll sort something out but anyway um, a little bit different from my normal run of the mill fishy videos so thank you if you have made it this long if it's been interesting to you at all, give me a like, give me a comment, let me know. Um, but next one I'll be back with some more fishy stuff. We'll drop these one in every now and again. But thanks for watching. Remember, click the like, click the subscribe. Uh, but thanks for taking the time. See you next time.